Black Desert Online is a buy-to-play, sandbox, kind of, action combat MMORPG developed by the Korean company Pearl Abyss. It's available on PC and consoles, but also there is a mobile version too. Black Desert features an active combat system that requires aiming, dodging, combos, mounted combat. It's a lot, and we're going to get into all of it. We also see an immense skilling system known as life skills, which can have you traveling around the world. Gathering, processing, sailing, breeding. If you can think of it, it's probably an activity that you can do in BDO. Now, I've always heard that BDO is an absolute pay-to-win grind fest filled with horrible RNG systems that provides unrewarding gameplay. But now, after having spent some time with this game, I don't think you should always take the first thing you hear as fact. Sure, some of those systems exist in the game, but there is so much more to BDO. The game is absolutely massive, and as someone who makes new player videos on MMOs, BDO has been by far my biggest undertaking. In terms of just understanding the game, what you can all get into, the best and worst of it, and then somehow trying to find a way to condense that down into a digestible video format. My first time spent in this game was that of mass confusion and being overwhelmed at the sheer size and the amount of systems and information that's required to really get into this game and you're going to notice that in some of my clips. Because of the size and the scope of the game, I won't be able to truly get into every single aspect as I like to do with some MMOs, and for that you'll have to forgive me. However, I can say with some confidence that if you guys enjoy this video, there will be more Black Desert in the future. With that being said, if you guys have been enjoying any of my MMO content, I would just like to quickly mention that channel memberships are now active on this channel. You can get yourself some cool emotes and badges for the comments section, and you can also support me in creating these videos which take a lot of time and effort. I appreciate you guys. But let's jump into Black Desert Online and find out should you give this game a try as a new player in the year 2024. From the very first moment that you interact with this game, you're met with a feeling of graphical brilliance. No, seriously, this game is beautiful inside and out, and you even see that here in the intro scene before you even get to your character select. Some of the Asian developed MMOs that I've been playing recently have really been blowing my mind in terms of graphics and visual design. While also giving decent performance, it really makes me question why some of the more western developed games with honestly subpar graphics are optimized so poorly. Now, BDO does new characters in a very interesting way. The game prompts you to start your adventure on a seasonal server. These servers are called seasonal because they were limited time servers, however they recently changed this so that the seasonal server is always active. It's permanent. Basically you get massively boosted XP rates, access to powerful armor, PvP is turned off, and access to a seasonal pass and all sorts of other benefits in order for you to create a new character and catch up to some of the longer time players in a reasonable amount of time. BDO is definitely a grind fest, and this game can take an absurd amount of time for meaningful amounts of progress, so this was Pearl Abyss's attempt at fixing the daunting feeling of new player onboarding. At some point in the future, you're going to take your new character and graduate from a seasonal server, moving over to a normal server. Anyhow, into character creation, I was already overwhelmed, and as I was soon to find out, that would be the theme for my entire time playing Black Desert. With over 27 different classes to choose from, most of them having extremely unique names which made no correlation to any classes that I had played in previous games, I spent quite a while here trying to decide what sounded best. The most recent addition to the game in terms of classes is the Scholar class. However, the classes are gender locked and Scholar was a female. I generally prefer to play male characters in my MMOs. I don't really like gender locking usually, but each class in BDO is more of a character in this game with their own story and personality, so I guess it makes sense. But seriously, there are so many unique sounding classes in here. Wusa, Megu, Shai, Tamer, Nova. I wish I had the time to try them all. You get a quick class preview in the bottom right corner as well as a description and some stats. So far the class that was really starting to stand out and look the most interesting to me was the Sage. A high mobility caster with long cooldowns sounded pretty interesting. I spent way too much time in character customization. There's about 30 billion options to choose from in terms of designing your character to look exactly how you would like. And I especially had fun playing with the facial expressions, which little to my knowledge at the time would be how your character's face looks permanently whenever you're idling. <laughs> awesome. Waydot the Sage was created and after a couple of quick graphical settings, we were into the tutorial. Man, these graphics are nuts. 
this game is actually beautiful. The game runs you through some basic controls and you're thrust into combat against a couple of assassins. You wake up this gargantuan ancient desert robot and follow with more beautiful cutscenes along the way. I can imagine in a lot of games they have these absolutely stunning intros in order to get players hooked into the game. But if BDO manages to keep up even half of this level of visual brilliance throughout the rest of my playthrough, I'll be pretty impressed. Moving through the tutorial, you're introduced to some of your abilities. Now, at this point in time, you don't actually have your quick slot action bar, which you'll get in just a short while. But you are presented with an infographic on your screen that tells you all of the different button combinations that you can press in order to cast your abilities. It sort of reminds me of a fighting game like Dragon Ball Z or Tekken, where pressing a combination of buttons results in different abilities. This is actually a super unique take on combat that I haven't really seen much in the MMO space. It's like action combat, but it includes fighting game mechanics. I was pretty interested. After finishing the tutorial, you're given a couple of different options in terms of starting zones. There's Land of the Morning Light, the Mountain of Eternal Winter, and the Ancient Stone Chamber. The Stone Chamber said it was recommended for new players, so who am I to argue? I woke up in a sort of ruinous mining expedition, and I was introduced to the Black Spirit. This dude is basically your ever-present guide throughout the game. You're going to be able to accept story quests, enhance your gear, claim rewards, and do all sorts of different functions through using your Black Spirit. As you can see, I now have my quick slot action bar at the bottom of the screen, so I can just use my spells from there, or I can use the combination buttons that I was using prior. I guess it's just a few different options depending on how you prefer to play the game. In the beginning, I was using the actual combinations quite often, but as I played more and more, and I got lazier and lazier, I tended to just use my abilities from my action bar. I took a minute here to explore the user interface, which is somewhat clean, but it's also fairly cluttered. There's a lot of clickable menus in a lot of different places. For example, up here, over here, down here, and that's just a fraction of the actual usable interfaces that exist in the game. It's pretty standard for Eastern-made MMOs to have an absolutely massive amount of systems and interfaces to interact with, so I wasn't really surprised. One thing I should mention, however, is that the interface is entirely and completely customizable. No, seriously, you can move everything and anything to where you would like it. For me, I just left most things where they were because I didn't want to confuse myself too early on. All right. Well, let's get into this. I started doing some of the intro quests that I was given. There's a path pointing you directly to where you need to go at all times. I noticed I was already level 6. I'm not sure when that happened. Also, speaking of, what is the max level in this game? Oh, there is no max level, really. However, there are a couple of soft caps. Apparently, at level 56, you will receive a huge upgrade that changes how your account plays. And you will find leveling significantly slower, much slower, all the way up to level 60, upon which you will once again hit another soft cap where leveling will once again become significantly slower. Apparently, the highest level player in the game is 67. At some point past level 63, it starts to take ridiculous amounts of playing to acquire levels. People literally spend years playing this game in order to just get one level at a certain point. So for all extensive purposes, people generally consider between 60 to 62 to be your typical max level. Within a few minutes of playing, I quickly realized that by pressing T, my character would just automatically run to wherever my quest location or marker was. You can just auto run. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure how to feel about that at the beginning of the game. I'm not gonna lie, it kinda gave me the wrong vibe as it felt sort of cheap and gimmicky in a mobile gaming sort of sense. But now that I have many many more hours in the game, even with the currently existing fast travel systems, you spend a lot of time traveling and the map is positively massive. So this auto run feature was used non-stop by me. And if I'm being completely honest, it didn't take anything away from the game for me personally. However, at first, it definitely gave me a bit of the wrong impression. Within probably 20 minutes of playtime, I was already level 10. The leveling was exceptionally fast at these lower levels, and the game was slowly teaching me about some of my abilities combos, where essentially, if you use one ability and another one right after, it'll actually change the effect of the second ability, allowing for a lot more different ways to play the game by making each ability interact and have combos with others. The combat was already impressing me, to say the least. One thing I would like to point out here is that BDO's systems all look vaguely familiar or similar or reminiscent to a lot of other systems in a lot of other games which led me to a sort of false sense of confidence where I felt like I understood and knew a lot of the systems that I was interacting with, 
but they are much deeper than that. For example, the skill point system kind of looks like a talent tree from other games, but it doesn't necessarily interact with BDO the same way. I constantly found myself thinking that I knew how something worked, only to be Googling it 10 minutes later. And oh my god, Googling for Black Desert is a nightmare. Certain games have just a plethora of information online. For example, Old School RuneScape is a shining pillar in the MMO space of what third-party information websites should strive to be with the Old School RuneScape wiki. Now, there are some resources that I found exceptionally helpful while playing BDO. These include Black Desert Foundry, as well as another fellow YouTuber named Evil Do Us Harm, who makes excellent guides. I'll leave links to both of those in the description. But Googling info for BDO is ridiculously challenging. I had so many unique problems during my time playing that for some reason no one online really had answers for. Some random Reddit thread might pop up from four years ago, but it turns out that that system was updated three years ago and now it works in a completely different way. This is kind of a hard thing to explain to someone who hasn't really tried the game, but trust me, if you play BDO and you run into a problem that you want to Google, I would say you only have about a 50% chance of finding somebody else who had the same problem and another 25% chance for their solution even working for you in the same way. Anyway, moving on, I started to get some items which increased the amount of space that I could have in my inventory. I was quite surprised at how much space was potentially available. Not only do you have a maximum amount of space in your inventory, but you also have a maximum amount of weight that you can carry. If you exceed that weight, your character is slowed down immensely. These are obviously two mechanics in which you can purchase your way out of dealing with these through the pearl shop, and we'll get into more on that later on. But I've heard that BDO is considered pretty excessively pay to win. So far it hasn't been much of a problem, but I'll make sure to let you guys know as we continue if anything crops up. Now, something else that I was beginning to notice is that even though I was equipping new pieces of gear and armor, my character's appearance was relatively unchanged. And this would basically be the case throughout my entire playthrough. Even when I got to a point where I could equip new appearance items, they really didn't fundamentally change the look of my character's equipment. It was mostly just different color schemes. In my opinion, this is a massive missed opportunity, as one of the best ways for a game to showcase character progression is through newer and better and stronger looking armor. You'll find throughout many storylines and quests throughout the game that you're given a choice between two options. This can dictate the way the story plays and what quests you get, although I don't believe it really has an effect on what rewards you might receive or anything like that. It's just a nice flavorful touch to enhance the story and personalize it a little bit more. Around level 12 was the first time that I interacted with the processing page. Basically, all of your skills and what you can create are available from this one page. From alchemy to smithing to woodworking sort of life skills, you will find everything here. I heated up and cooked some wolf meat as my introduction to this system. Earlier, you might have heard me say that BDO is a sandbox style of game. It's not a true sandbox game by any means, but it's pretty damn close considering this is an MMO. The life skills and processing part of the game, which is for some people the only reason they play BDO, is massive, and there's so much to go into. I fear just in my first impressions video I won't be able to touch on each and every life skill, some of them have their lengthy quest lines with their own equipment and progression paths, but it's safe to say if you consider yourself a skiller or a crafter in a lot of other MMOs, I think BDO might definitely be a game that you would be interested in. Afterwards, I took a look around the world map for the first time, and as with most things in BDO, I was pretty impressed with its visual design. It's easy to understand, displays plenty of info you might need regarding monsters and different areas to grind in, as well as cities and later on potential fast travel info that you might need. If you take a look around, you'll see different cities and areas that are considered nodes, and you can actually hire workers to gather and farm in particular nodes so you can make money or farm items that you might use in crafting and you can do all of this passively. The map has a nice filter and search function, and overall it just looks fantastic. I was excited to really begin to open it up and see the rest of the world. I got into my first sort of boss fight, if you will, through the main story quest, Red Nose. And I have to say, watching this back, the combat is so much slower in the early parts of the game. This boss took me forever to finally get him down. When your class is just starting out, you're missing a lot like more than 80% of your core abilities and things that you have by the end of your leveling process. So it plays a lot slower in the start, but don't worry, it definitely begins to ramp up pretty quickly. I made it to the first town and met an NPC named Hans. What is this, RuneScape? 
Once again, and I'm sorry, but I just have to mention again how graphically beautiful this game is. I'm sorry, but it feels good to play an MMO that looks this good. It gives you a sense of trust in the game that if they can design it to be so visually compelling, well then it only makes sense that the gameplay and systems would follow suit. That's the idea, anyway. I was introduced to the pet system, just one pet to start out. They can actually loot items off the ground for you, which is super handy, and later on you can have up to five pets with you at a time to speed up the looting process. After that, I was asked to choose a family name. A family is obviously a group of your alternate characters, and by them being in a family, there's certain cross-family rewards that your alts in the future can benefit from. That's always a win in my book, super handy, as it often sucks having to do the same monotonous tasks time and time again on multiple characters. I had this season pass pop up, and I immediately assumed, oh, battle pass mechanics, I'll probably be ignoring this. However, I was quite wrong in my assumption, as this battle pass has a free and paid version, and the free version actually comes in so, so handy when upgrading your seasonal character's gear. Now, another thing you'll notice when you start Black Desert is that you are receiving an absolutely constant stream of updates from what other characters are attempting to do on your server. Whether that's upgrading gear or PvP related things or boss fights, there's just a constant banner that's always playing these in-game updates. It didn't really bother me and I didn't really notice it at the start, but I soon became quite annoyed with it. Luckily, it's toggleable in the settings and you can adjust what you actually want to receive alerts for. However, I gotta say, I feel like this should just be turned off by default. Also, while combat in this game feels very fluid and immersive, I will admit that movement can sometimes feel pretty janky. Your character will fall when you want to jump, or make wide turns when you want them to be sharp, or in this case, ladders. BDO has the slowest ladder climbing I've ever experienced in a game. I ended up dying for the very first time when facing this boss. Death can actually reduce your experience in BDO, and usually it will send you to the closest safe area. However, as long as you are below level 20, you get free resurrections wherever you are. Later on, you can use items to instant res as well as to stifle the experience drain. I finally got myself some new looking armor. Like I said, it's fundamentally the same, but the color scheme has changed. And I also got access to my first mount. Mounts are really, really interesting in Black Desert. Not only do they have their own level, but depending on where you store them on the map, you may need to transport them to get them closer to you. You can also participate in mounted combat, use your mount as storage, and actually just riding your mount trains one of your life skills. Training. This is just another example of how everything in Black Desert is a system and something that you really need to delve into and understand. You don't just get a mount, you unlock an entire new skill and system and upgrades. And it was all a little much for me at the start, if I'm being completely honest. But looking back on it now, it's pretty awesome. Believe it or not, in only about three hours of gameplay so far, I was level 20. The only thing I was really doing is following the main story quest line and the quests that the game was giving me. Because I generally learn games best by just playing them and then later doing research if I have any specific questions. As a seasonal character, you get an absolutely ridiculous amount of rewards and free things while you're playing. Here, I was given a bunch of gold bars, which you can exchange for silver. It was over 25 million worth, which is nothing in the grand scheme of things, but it definitely helps as a new player. You're also given access to a dream mount, a tier 9 mount. I chose Doom because he was fiery and edgy and looked cool, but apparently it's the fastest of the dream mounts that you can actually choose from. After some more questing, I got myself to level 25 and I came across a boss that was a little bit too tough for me, or so my black spirit thought. And because of that, I decided to grind on some of the monsters in the area for a while. Now, Black Desert does this a lot differently than a lot of other games I've seen. Essentially, there are grind locations all throughout the map that show the recommended stats and level for a specific area, as well as the loot and whatever else you might want to acquire or grind for. Grinding in BDO means finding one of these areas and absolutely destroying thousands upon thousands upon thousands of monsters. I ended up grinding in this specific area to level 31, which took almost no time at all. But as you'll find out later in my gameplay, I ended up killing about 30,000 monsters in one area in one afternoon just to gain one level. At this point in my playthrough, it was the first time that I interacted with the gear enhancement system. 
On a seasonal character, you are given a full set of armor and accessories known as Naru. This armor can only be used while your character is still on the seasonal servers. Using resources that you're going to get from questing and grinding, you're going to want to upgrade these from level 1 to 15. And then after they're level 15, you're going to start upgrading them from Pre to Duo to Tri to Tet, and finally Pen. Once you hit Duo, you run the risk of actually downgrading your armor every time you try to upgrade it. Once your Naru gear is fully upgraded to Pen, you can then convert it into Tuvala gear, which you will once again upgrade all the way to Pen. And eventually, when you graduate from the seasonal servers, you can exchange this armor and these weapons and accessories for Tet boss weapon armor and accessories that you can use in the normal servers. Now, if you're a brand new player and what I said doesn't make any sense to you and doesn't even sound like English, don't feel bad at all. Because in the clip that you're watching right now, I felt the exact same way. To put it into simple terms, you're going to get seasonal armor that through the enhancement system you can upgrade to full-on endgame armor that you can take with you once you're ready to graduate your character beyond the season. I've heard awful things about BDO's gear progression system, and trust me, it's chock full of insanely low chance RNG situations that are bound to make you angry and take hundreds of hours of time and grinding to even acquire the resources to attempt in the first place, but it's not as bad as I originally thought. For some reason, I had always heard that when you fail to upgrade in BDO, your armor gets destroyed. This isn't really the case. Your accessories, yes, you have a chance to lose those, but your armor and weapons will never fully be lost if you fail to upgrade them. So it's a bit of a silver lining, but we'll get into more on that later on. Back to my progression, I had been receiving tons of new titles and figured this one would be quite fitting. I finished off day one at level 40 already. The progression was ridiculously fast in the early game. I don't think any other MMO that I've played on this channel thus far have I reached level 40 in just the first day. Personally, at this point, I was tired and overwhelmed and I felt stupid. Because, as I said, BDO just has so many systems and so much to dive into, and I recommend to any new players to learn from my mistake here. Do not try and learn everything at once and try to understand everything. You're gonna fail at that. Just pick a quest, enjoy the game for what it is at the start, and then as you run into questions and things, do some research then. Alright, starting day two. I was looking disheveled, but trust me, that's because I slept like a rock, and I was ready to continue. I made it to Calfian, my first real time seeing a true city in BDO. It's everything you would expect, every NPC you can imagine, plenty of other players roaming around doing their thing, and overall it was a really cool, immersive looking place. I continued questing and continued upgrading my gear. I stopped when I only had a 90% chance of upgrading because I falsely was still under the impression that my gear might be destroyed if I failed. That's the problem of hearing things about games before you try to play them. And eventually I got to level 49 and it wouldn't let me progress to 50. You have to complete this oddly placed quest in order to actually get to level 50. I was a little bit confused about that at the time, but the reason for this is because at level 50 on a normal server is when PvP becomes active. So some characters might want to stay at level 49 for particular reasons while they finish specific quests or tasks before activating PvP. After level 50, I must say it definitely felt like my experience was slowing down. And then... I was introduced to the Magnus questline, which gives you no experience, by the way. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, I hated everything about this questline. Looking back on this moment now, it's actually essential, really, to your character's progression to do and complete the Magnus questline. But as I had been leveling and fighting and questing around the world, I was beginning to develop a rhythm and a cadence of gameplay that I was really enjoying. And the Magnus questline throws a giant wrench into that feeling of progression. As a new player, I didn't understand the importance of the Magnus, or why I was doing this, or even what it was. Let me explain. The Magnus takes place on an entirely different world. So even your user interface options change when you're in the Magnus. You can't look at the world map because you're in a different world. You can't access your normal armor or inventory. It's like an entirely separate dimension. The Magnus questline has 100 separate quests inside of it. 100. But the rewards are well, well worth it. The problem for me is that I didn't know what the rewards were at the time. And the Magnus questline is rather tedious. It constantly has you stuck in animations as you go from place to place, where, well, you'll be solving puzzles. So, so, so many puzzles. And riddles. And participating in boss fights. But mostly just puzzles. And when you think you're almost done, you're not. 
teleporters and abyssal pearls and shooty cannons and wizards that go through gates. What the hell happened to my questing and progression? I was flying through levels and now I'm stuck playing Zelda. It was very jarring as a new player who didn't fully understand why I was there. The Magnus questline essentially has you opening portals throughout the world, which grants you access to a fast travel system that using just silver allows you to get around the world so much quicker, which is huge because traveling can take a very long time in BDO. You end the Magnus questline with a boss fight, which I tried to do on hard mode, but failed immensely. And afterwards, it even gives you access to one piece of pen boss armor, which you'll be able to use once you graduate your character. To put into perspective how long the Magnus questline actually took, I had doubled my playtime from the time I started the questline to the time I finished. Granted, my playtime had only been between 6 to 8 hours at that point, and I probably could have done it a lot faster if I followed a guide for most of the puzzles, but I just figured them out on my own. And here's where hindsight is 2020. It was actually kind of fun. But at the time, I felt like it was stifling my progression, and I didn't understand why I was there. I think BDO could probably do a bit of a better job here of explaining to new players why they should participate in the Magnus questline. Anyways, after finishing with the Magnus, I was level 52, I had access to fast travel, and I was ready to continue questing and upgrading my gear and levels. At this point, the main storyline is mostly finished up, and so quests that grant experience are gatekept behind further levels. You can check your quest log to see recommended quests. Some of the quests will give you things like further advancement to your inventory space, and I decided to go knock out some of those. One of them had me try fishing. Oh my god, fishing. First of all, I think there was some event going on as there was a ton of players fishing in this location. But let me explain fishing a bit to you guys. First of all, you can do this activity AFK. That means you drop your lure in, and whenever you get a bite, after three minutes, your character will automatically reel in that fish. This was not something that I originally knew existed. The only fishing that I thought you could do is known as active fishing. And it's fucking ridiculous. Essentially, a fish bites your lure, and you have to precisely time your spacebar at the precise right moment in order to catch the fish. I thought to myself, hey, that's pretty annoying, and it's also kind of difficult, but I figured, you know, once I press my spacebar at the right time, I'll catch a fish, right? Wrong! Once you press your spacebar at the right time, you enter phase two of the catching a single fish boss fight, where you have to play Guitar Hero with your WASD keys, and you have to do this seriously fast, otherwise you don't catch the fish. I failed not once, not twice, but three times before I finally caught a discarded glass bottle. It's actually kind of a useful item, but still, I was floored at how difficult active fishing was, so I quickly moved on my way. Some more grinding and questing later, and I finally achieved level 56, which is a pretty defining moment for your character in BDO. You see, this unlocks the Succession and Awakening questline. Every class has access to this questline, though it's different for each class. Essentially, after you complete this questline, you're given access to a new weapon and a plethora of new abilities, Afterwards, you can switch between these weapons. Using your old normal weapon would allow you to use all of your abilities that you were using before. However, when you switch to your awakening weapon, you can then use all of your awakening abilities. As a sage, my new weapon granted me access to a bunch of ridiculous AoE abilities. And to be honest, from this point on, I just generally played with my awakening weapon. Though I think more long-term players will tell you that the best way to play is to properly switch between your two weapons at opportune moments. At level 57, I unlocked the Valencia questline, which had me travel into the desert. While you're in the desert, you will periodically receive debuffs. You either get hypothermia or heat stroke, depending on the time of the day. In which case, you're going to need purified water or star anise tea to get rid of the debuffs. However, I just had a ton of health potions on me at all times, and I would use those to keep myself alive whenever the debuffs were taking damage. During this questline, I met up again with that same giant robot from the tutorial. And also, my black spirit changed appearance. Now he has ancient desert stuff. Cool. I did some more questing, and I checked out Land of the Morning Light, which is one of the newer areas that was added to the game based on Korean folklore. I checked out the Camus Sylvia questline, which had me take a hot air balloon, which apparently acts as another form of semi-fast travel. But at this point, I was really beginning to question, what am I doing? What am I working towards? Though you as the viewer have the benefit of me already explaining the goals of receiving full Pen Tuvala armor, as well as completing the free seasonal pass, at this point in my playthrough, I actually didn't know about these systems just yet. 
This is the point when I realized, oh, I should be upgrading my gear and my accessories, like a lot. So I did just that, failing time and time again, but ever so slowly getting all my Naru gear and weapons to pen and converting them into Tuvula. Eventually, all of my gear was Tri or Tet Tuvula, except my main weapon, which I luckily got an easy pen upgrade on. Now, I still had to work on my accessories. This includes both earrings, both rings, necklace, and belt. But those operate slightly differently than your normal gear, as they do have a chance of being destroyed if you fail an upgrade. It was at this point that I found out through the seasonal pass you actually get access to a free pen, tuvula, ring, and earring. So I quickly caught up on what I should be working towards with my seasonal pass. Now, while upgrading your gear, you use a lot of resources known as time-filled blackstones. Luckily for me, I had an absolute plethora of these from doing random kill quests in areas that I was located in, and even just completing a bunch of the main story quests, you get so, so many of these. So I had more than enough to upgrade my armor and weapons to full pen, which was such a good feeling because I had a lot of failures along the way. So, I had a couple of things left that I needed to work towards in order to get my pen accessories. First and foremost, I had to level up and work on the Season Pass. Not only would this get me a free ring and earring, but it also grants you access to an item called the Boiling Tides Blackstone, which will guarantee an upgrade from Tet to Pen on any accessory. After knocking that out, I went and found a blacksmith where you can exchange resources for all pre-Tuvula accessories, which is actually what's required in order to upgrade the Tuvula accessories. You basically use a base version of the accessory to upgrade it each time. So as you can imagine, you can go through an absolute ton of these. My road was once again met with many, many failures, but eventually, and with a bit of luck, I had every single accessory slot filled and upgraded to pen, except for one. The last Tuvula earring, which I would get from the season pass when I acquired level 60. I was currently level 58, about halfway to 59, and I decided to head to the grind location known as Polly's Forest. The monsters in this area are all mushrooms, and it's absolutely filled to the brim with packs of these mushrooms. I figured maybe in a couple of hours of grinding, I should be level 60, and finished with my full pen Tuvula set. I was a little bit mistaken though, as a couple of hours later, I had only just acquired level 59. I was starting to understand what grinding really meant in Black Desert. After doing a bit of research, I ended up learning about the experience buffs, which are temporary buffs that you can buy from other players, or on the marketplace, or perhaps you get from quest rewards or the season pass. Of course, you can also spend real life money in the pearl shop as well. I think at one point I had something like 800% more experience gain just from buffs. but. It was still pretty damn slow. I probably spent in total about 6 hours grinding here to go from level 58 all the way to level 60. But I finally did it, I got to level 60, and with it the final piece of my pen Tuvula earring which completed my full set. On top of that I also completed the entire season pass, and I figured this would be a good point for me to stop. I experienced the full sort of progression loop that a new player would go through when creating a seasonal character. And now, I'll share some of my final thoughts on the game. My expectations going into this game were so completely different from what I actually experienced that I'm also beginning to doubt everything I've heard about gaming in the past. Generally, in any online space, if you talk about BDO, people say it's a pay-to-win, RNG-filled grindfest that will have you paying money out your ass before you experience any semblance of decent gameplay. This couldn't be further from the truth, at least in my limited experience. Does RNG exist and play a massive role in your gears upgrading? Absolutely. Do you have to grind a lot to progress in BDO? For sure. Are there pay to win elements to this game? No doubt about it. But none of that really took anything away from the amount of sheer joy and entertainment that I got out of this game. This right here is my first time opening the Pearl Shop as a completely free to play character that already grinded out all of my seasonal gear to its highest level and is getting somewhat close to graduating to a normal server. Not once while playing did I feel truly compelled to spend any real life money. Now, don't get me wrong, you can absolutely spend thousands upon thousands of dollars if you so choose to. But some of the games that I review, I really feel like I'm missing out by not spending a certain threshold of money. And to be honest, I truly expected Black Desert to be the same. As one of the supposedly most notoriously pay to win games on the market, to my surprise, that was just not my experience at all. Who knows, in the future and on a normal server, maybe my experience with the monetization in Black Desert will change. But if you want to play this game and get a massive amount 
amount of enjoyment out of it as a free player, especially in the early game in the first 100 hours or so, that's totally possible. Anyway, like I said in the intro of this video, I feel like I've hardly scratched the surface of this game. I barely touched life skills, I've only played on a seasonal server, and I haven't played with others or participated in PvP. But there is just so much to Black Desert. Too many times in most modern MMOs, I feel like the destination is always some sort of endgame meta that everyone is following. And while this may be the case in the true endgame of Black Desert as well, there's just so many options to play this game how you want to play. If you want to log in and sail around and fish and send workers to specific nodes and make money, go ahead. If you want to log in and kill 20,000 monsters while working towards a rare drop or just grinding experience in silver, you can do that too. The options really feel quite endless in this game, and that feeling of freedom is expressed really, really well in Black Desert. The game is positively massive, and my first impressions were nothing but stellar. I enjoyed this game immensely. Should you play Black Desert as a brand new player in 2024? I would say absolutely. But be prepared to be overwhelmed and have moments where you have no idea what to do. And you'll probably have to watch some videos to catch up and understand everything about this game because it's a game that has depth. Every system is unique and complex and different. It was a truly awesome experience and if you guys would like to see me make another video on Black Desert in the future where I go even more in depth on many of the other systems that I left out in this video, please let me know. As always, a massive thanks to everybody who made it to the end of the video. Don't forget a like, a comment, a subscription, those things help a bunch. And if you really want to support me and my channel, consider becoming a member. Anyways, I will catch you all in the next one. Later.